I don't even know how to start. Just um, start it. Okay. Welcome everyone to Dallas Hoops Fancast, a podcast for Mavs fans and a safe place overall just to share feelings. Uh, I'm your host, Sydney. I'm here with my co-host, Martin. Hi. <laughs> um, you can follow the show on Twitter at Dallas Which Hoops is, Cast. Yeah, they can't hear that stuff right you now. You can follow me on Twitter, and let's, that let's is please, also a safe place. Please move on. At underscore Sydney Myers. We're all, you know, we're all in this together. It's like the the people on the boats from the Titanic, you know, we're all alive together, and that's what matters. I really shouldn't compare this to such no. a tragic Do you event. want to re, re, no, read No, I'm it? good. Okay. It's right. just, you know, my emotions get the better of me. Um, I have no notes for this episode. We're just going to talk. And I before we even start, if you're listening to this and you wonder what kind of tone it's going to take, if you can't already tell... Um, yeah, we're disappointed and we're upset. And so we're going to, we're going to share that and then you can share it right back at us. Um, but I, I do want to clarify or just, you know, clear up that we still support Donnie Nelson. I think he's a great Mm -hmm. GM and I, I understand the Mavs have KP and Luca. I know they're going to be good next year, but I, I can still be upset about what happened. Like, I'm not going to put any we've talked about this before, you know, we don't work for the team. We're not a big media company. We can say how we feel. We are, we are on the same page with you. Um, but you know, I, I just, I do, I don't think Donnie Nelson should be fired. Right. I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not as drastic as some of these yeah, fans yeah. fire them all. Yeah. And- but we are, you know, so we're, we're going to share some frustrations. Um, Martin, would you like to take the floor first or we'll just, yeah, I mean, just go at it. Well, like you mentioned, uh, I, I still believe in Donnie Nelson. I believe Donnie Nelson is a great GM. I do. And there's a lot of people maybe that feel like he's not because the Mavericks haven't gotten a big name free agent. Right. And you know what? That's 100% accurate. It's they true. have not. There's a lot of influences around that that impacted those decisions. I don't think a lot of them should be put on Donnie Nelson. So that being said, yes, I, I think the Mavs organization is a high class organization. I think. KP and Luca are going to be stars. And like these other teams now, all of them seem to have two stars. I think the Mavericks are right there with them with two stars. We just got to see them on the court. Yeah. That being said, we're still upset. This was a very disappointing free agency. Yeah. And the thing that disappoints me the most is that it appears, whether it's true or not, it appears the Mavericks weren't actually interested in, in anybody, any of these guys. They didn't even try. They and didn't I, even. They didn't even want them. As if you know, we're so good. I don't even want you to and, buy and, and, Harris. And, okay, so I don't know if that's their mindset behind. Or it. just it's yeah. just they just they didn't appear to have interest. And I know like some of the big name guys like Kemba. Okay, you got taken out of those sweepstakes pretty quickly. But there were other guys out there like Bogdanovich. Yeah, Malcolm Brogdon. Malcolm Brogdon. Bogdanovich. Patrick Beverly. Beverly was a big yeah. one. Yeah, um, I can't they, think they, of they were in other names. D'Angelo the, Russell, Julius Randle, Julius Randle. Like, and look, I know some of these guys. They're not the best fit for your team. I understand but that, but look assets. at what the Warriors did. Yeah, D'Angelo Russell does not fit with what the Warriors' style of play is. Their style is a lot of ball movement, and D'Angelo Russell's a one-on-one guy. Yeah, really good at it, but doesn't fit. He does not fit with Steph and Clay. but they didn't care about that. What they were concerned about was getting an asset, because that asset will turn into other assets. And the Mavericks should have known that, because look what happened when you had Dennis Smith, an asset, exactly with DeAndre Jordan's contract, an asset, and Wes Matthews' contract, an asset. You turn those assets... Into Kristaps Porzingis. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe the perfect guy for you wasn't out there. Maybe Bogdanovich, you did have concerns with his defense. That's fine. But the guy's an asset, yeah. and you can turn that asset into another asset that fits your team. But it appears they weren't interested in any of these guys. Out of 400 free agents, they were interested in one Danny Green, which, don't get me wrong, I really wanted Danny Green, but to target one. That's just not safe. And then you're going to say like, well, we didn't want those other guys or, or now we're not going to do anything because we didn't get our one guy. And it's like, well, and, you can still make the team better. And Why that could not? all be PR, you Maybe. know, they, whatever. They're trying to save face. Look, we don't really know 
who they were interested in and who they were going at because they are very good at not leaking their yeah. information. So we really don't know. It just appears yeah. that way that they really had one guy in their mind was Kemba. When they didn't get Kemba, they it had was Danny one other Green. Guy. And that was it. Yeah. And now they're not like we're hearing they're not interested in Avery Bradley. Which they're not I don't... interested in Steven Adams. And it's like, well, why not? They okay. would make you better. And that's even okay, that's my point. If 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 you were able to get Steven Adams for nothing. Now, again, the the Thunder, Steven Adams is a high quality asset. So right. they're not just going to give him away. Right. But let's just pretend that you had an opportunity to get him. Well, the reports are you're not interested in yeah. him. And that just boggles my mind, my mind because yeah, he may not be a fit with your offense. I know you got to have that rim roll. I, I know Carlisle's got the specific players that he wants, but this is an asset that you can turn yeah. into other assets well, and, if it does not and fit. And he's a good player. And that's and he's better than Kapowell. <laughs> with all due respect to yeah. Dwight Powell, no, Stephen Adams is on another level yeah. than Dwight Howard. And so I mean Dwight Powell yeah. and Dwight Howard. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I know they have Luca and KP, and they're going to be good, but. They could be better if they got mm -hmm. some of these other guys. Why wouldn't you want to make them better? And like, and that's what I'm talking about is this idea that we have to stay like we can't be mad about this. Like I wanted to talk about this tweet from Jeff Skinweed mm -hmm. because he's on the positivity thing. And you know what? Respect. Okay, I appreciate that. Well, but I have a whole. When we get into that, I got a whole bunch to say. Well, about okay. That. So his tweet. Someone called him out. He was like, "Dude." You helped fuel the fury with your Mavs fans are going to be really excited about this free agency tweet. And Skin Wade tweeted, he said, I, I understand and I've tweeted as much, but Mavs are still in a very good position. Fans don't have to act like moody, petulant little eighth grade girls going through puberty that don't get their way. The negativity over a team in such a great position is pathetic. These people deserve Dolan. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is the kind of spin that I'm not going to put on things because I'm a fan and I can just, we can just say however we feel. But it's like, dude, okay, talk about spreading positivity. You're going to do that through insults or mm -hmm. this idea that we don't have the right to be upset. It's like, I can be upset. I can understand that they have Luca and Porzingis and they're going to be good. And I can understand that they tried and swung and or missed and sometimes that happens. But and I can also be upset. Like, yeah. I, I wanted Danny Green and they didn't get him. I'm disappointed. Yeah, and I think he's more targeting those that say fire Donnie yeah, and all maybe. that. Which, okay, that's like, a little bit okay, dramatic. But you're you are upset gotta, with our reaction. Look at your reaction. Yes. How is that positive? Yeah. Well, and you got to understand, we're fans. We're disappointed. We're watching the Clippers, the Lakers, the everybody, everybody <laughs> else. get The Utah Jazz, yeah. you know. And yeah, we're disappointed. Do I want Donnie fired? Am I burning a Mavericks jersey? No, no. of course not. I do think we're going to make the playoffs next year. I just thought we had a great opportunity to to build a really good team, maybe even a contending team if if the pieces fell right. And I remember when he first originally tweeted back before free agency started. Yeah. He said, Mavs fans are going to be really happy with the way this summer goes. Like he had some inside information because <laughs> he's close to the Mavericks. And I remember it I said, for the team. screenshot that and save that because you can't say stuff like that. And then things don't go well. And then now you're trying to, to now backtrack. Now you're like, well, guys, you should stay positive. It's like, well, Look, I could, but yes. I'm just disappointed. We're, I mean, we're happy we got Luca and KP. Yeah. I know 14 months ago, everybody keeps mentioning 14 months ago, they had no direction. We agree. Yeah. Okay, but that doesn't explain the lack of movement in free agency. When you had all of this money, what was the point of trading Harrison Barnes? Yeah, you got if, calf if, space. Yeah, if you didn't do anything, you're better off if you just kept Harrison Barnes. Yeah. Him and Luke uh, had a great chemistry Towards going with his three. There, yeah. yeah, well, and that's, that's what I want to make clear is like, I didn't set these expectations. I didn't say the Mavs should do this and then expect them to listen to me. Okay, the Mavs are the ones that made trades for cap space. They're the ones that cleared all this cap. You know, they're the ones that set all these things and made these moves. Clearly, they intended mm -hmm. to use that money for something. Like, they're the ones that set these expectations. I have to imagine that they're disappointed too. Oh, if they're... Now... Donnie is Mr. Positive. Yeah, he'll so say whatever he, he's he needs gonna, to say. Well, because he's going to keep it positive, and that's his job. Yeah. But 
I, I can't believe that this free agency went their way. Like I, I, in their mind, it didn't go the way they wanted it to either. Especially if they wanted Kemba, they were out of that as soon as Boston yeah. said, "Hey, we want Kemba too." Oh, okay, we're coming to you. Boston's the front runners. Yeah, like, and well, they like, just all they said. The was... Mavs are at a disadvantage in free agency when it comes to the big name free agents, but they're not with the second tier, the Bogdanoviches, the, the Malcolm Barnes, Brogdons, Chandler Parsons. They can bring you those know, guys in. Yeah, so target those guys. And, but, and no, we, we got to get a star. We got to keep the powder dry. <laughs> it's like that powder yeah. is expired, okay? And it's like, can we move on from the only way you get stars is by trades? Yeah, because that's where Donnie. That, he that's can his work. expertise. Yeah, he's amazing he, he does, with that. Yes. You give him assets and draft picks and you get Dirk and Luca and But KP you can't. And, they they couldn't make a trade for years because they had no assets. Yes. All of a sudden they draft Dennis Smith, number nine. That's an asset. Yeah. And then that you that sign asset, contracts, Barnes and Matthews and DeAndre. And you these have things assets. are assets. And and the to go through the entire free agency with not bringing any high quality assets. No disrespect to Seth. We are so happy. We he's talked back. about that last episode. Yes, I, I, love I love Seth. Seth. This isn't about yes. that. And I just felt like. Bogdanovich, you had an opportunity, and it appears you had zero interest. Patrick Beverly, they didn't Patrick even call Beverly, Patrick I felt Beverly. Like, yes, and and that's and then you had an opportunity to get Goran Dragic, who's a solid point guard, friends with Luca. It would help you on he, and off the court. He would be the third best player on your team right now. Yeah, and we're like, no, we want Derek Jones. If you ain't Jr. giving us Derek Jones Jr., it is the, off the great. <laughs> Derek, well, Jones, they didn't want to take Jr. Goran the the cap space. They didn't want to take up the oh, cap that, space. Oh, that that certainly helped them. Now, I mean, it's easy to say that in retrospect, which is where we but are. That's the so problem. that's all we can do. But that's what they do. They 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 held on to this hope, this one yeah. percent chance of getting Danny Green. You didn't make any other moves instead of just moving on. Exactly. As soon as he said it's between you, the Lakers, and the Clippers. And the Raptors, you should have just moved on. Yeah. We have a 25% chance to get a guy that if the that, Lakers also yes. want. Why would we win that? And okay. that's that's my thing is like the free agent going after the big fish. Danny Green is not a big fish, which almost makes it worse. A, a like, great, yeah. Yes. We can't even get Danny Green to sign here, okay? Like, can we finally move on from this from free idea? Agency. Of free, yes. Yeah. And it's it's been this way ever since the championship. And it's like... And it's not just that we're losing out on guys. It's that the guys that we're not getting, that we're giving up. Like, we didn't bring back Tyson and Berea because we wanted uh, Dwight Darren Howard Williams. And Darren Williams. We didn't draft yeah. Giannis because they wanted a chance at Dwight Howard. Like, it's not just the guys that you don't get. It's the guys that you also miss out on. And it's just, it's so frustrating. It's like, can we finally just... Stop. Sometimes Can we stop that. You just, if you have an opportunity to get better, whether it was your number one option, sometimes you just got to make it because you need assets in order to turn them into better assets. If you continue to stand pat, hoping and waiting for that guy, then you're always going to be missing out on players. The and I. The fact that this trade with Porzingis is not proof of that. I know. The, the one time you get an asset. It turned into a better Porzingis. asset. <laughs> yeah. So you need assets to get assets. So sign them. Or, you know, like what we were saying earlier, Andre Iguodala is available. Steven Adams Do might be available. Um, Avery Bradley is available. Dwight Howard might be available. I'm not saying I want Howard. I'm just saying from what we've heard, they're not interested in any of these guys. And, it's and that like, doesn't why make not? any sense. Now, there are rumors that the members are interested in Iguodala. Ooh, yippee you know well, it would, would have been great if you had danny green because yeah, then you had both point, of them at this point i would love to have iguodala because now even more so you need those wing defenders yeah because you're gonna go against Kawhi and paul george lebron every night it's damian gonna be, willard yeah every everybody night russell westbrook be, yeah. may he rest in peace <laughs> <laughs> you know and you know I, I don't really feel bad for westbrook because no, no, i feel no, no, like no. people have been telling him for years what he needs to change and he's like no <laughs> that's it i'm my Just, own man you know let's not impersonate okay. Russell that's what westbrook. westbrook sounds like okay so yeah i mean look there are some irrational fans out there yes but ben <laughs> well or anybody that's saying that we should not be upset that we need to stay positive that we're 
being unreasonable. Anybody that says anything about what's needing that, to stay positive. What's that famous saying about arguing with somebody on the internet? It's not a good Okay. View. <laughs> so he's arguing with irrational and call, Maz fans. And insulting and them. And insulting them. And that is somehow supposed to make him look like a more rational yes. adult person. Yeah. Like, look. We're upset. And like, I think that's fine. Everybody's going to forget about this free agency. It'll heal. And as soon as you yeah. see Luca, KP, Doing pick and roll. Yeah, yeah, pick and roll. Pick and pop, whatever. Everybody's going to be super happy. But we are disappointed in the way this free yeah. agency went. It looked like we were not really interested in any of these guys that they had an opportunity to get. It appears that way. We don't know. It just appears that way. When Bogdanovich can get, you know, <laughs> persuaded to go to Utah, <laughs> and we, we can't get in that sweepstakes Utah. and for, for $18 million a hey, year. Utah is a beautiful state. Offer him four for 80 The city of Utah is just... <laughs> You know, all 50 people that live in that state, you but know, it's, Utah is a beautiful state. It's beautiful. That was just a yeah. joke. But, but yeah. it's like, I feel like at least Dallas is a better destination yeah. than Utah. And and like I said earlier, I have to believe that the front office is also disappointed. It, I mean, you have to be. Yeah, you'd have to be. So I don't. I think it's fine to be upset, to be disappointed. We can still support the team. I know they're going to be good next year. They have a bright future. But I, I mean, and yeah, why wouldn't I be upset that yeah, they I, didn't get anybody? I'm still excited about yeah. the season because of and about Luka. Porzingis and yeah, Luca. Yeah. And uh, when you look at some of the players that, that Luca had put up numbers like in his rookie year, and then you look at their, the jump they made their second season. Yeah, we were looking at that the other Luka day. Luca is, is, has a real chance of being a complete stud next, next year. year like a straight up superstar so we looked at lebron his mm -hmm. which luca had a better rookie year than, than lebron but lebron averaged like 21 points his rookie year next season he averaged like 27 mm -hmm. and then um i can't remember who kevin durant kevin went durant. from 20 to 25 yeah all of them from their rookie season to their second season it was like they became that guy that they are right now so and so luca has a exciting. real opportunity of averaging like 25 8 and 8 yeah. next year now those guys also went up to like 40 minutes a game which so carlisle is not gonna allow. yeah so my expectations with luca are i'm not saying he's gonna average seven 27 but like you said 24, 24 25, 25 yeah but and, and the bigger point is just making the jump to a superstar that yeah. is well within his reach right yes. now so the, the mavericks are gonna be good yeah we're not saying they're not but i want just... danny green <laughs> And and like, okay, the Lakers got him okay, for two year thirty. Let's talk million. about that. Okay, because in our last episode, we said that it would appear that it's that Danny Green is using the Mavericks as leverage, mm -hmm. and the reasoning was was because he's either going to sign where Kawhi signs, or um, once Kawhi signs, the other teams will get desperate and they'll drive up their price. Well, the Mavericks already had the highest price, so they can't outbid themselves. And so it was like, who else can drive up their price? Well, the Lakers and the Clippers, a.k.a. not the Mavs. And I, you know, I don't know for sure. I obviously, I don't know the facts, but I'm also not stupid. Like, I can read a situation and kind of perceive what happened. The fact that the Lakers signed Danny Green for two years, 30 million, that's 15 million a year, which is more than what the Mavs supposedly offered. The way that Danny Green was saying how much he liked the Mavs, how tantalizing the offer is. Quote unquote. Like 13 million compared to 15 million. If you're going to describe something as tantalizing. 12 million, not yeah, even 12. 13, 12. Yeah, 12 compared to 15. If I'm And, and also they have LeBron and AD. Mm -hmm. If I'm describing an offer as tantalizing, it would be that one. But he didn't, which makes me believe that what we said, what I thought was going to happen is what happened. The Lakers got de desperate. He said, well, the Mavs offered me this. So the Lakers drove up their price. He was never actually going to come here. Well, and again, it appears that, yes, you were interested in Danny Green, but you weren't willing to do what was necessary to get him. Yeah. Three for 36 is not going to convince him to come to Dallas over the Lakers, right. especially when they have LeBron and Anthony yeah. Davis. So in order to get Danny Green, you had to give him the, the contract of a lifetime, which we're willing to give to Wes <laughs> Matthews in a heartbeat. In fact, we even paid him more or than Harrison he asked Barnes for. Or, or Harrison yeah. or Chandler Parsons. And that's, okay, this goes back to the championship, and then you can finish your sentence. Mm -hmm. Goes back, and you said, who said this? It might have been Stephen A. Smith. He was like, Mark Cuban, and okay, just for the record, I respect Mark it's Cuban. Steven, yes. Yeah, like I'm not saying Cuban's an idiot, but I'm saying in the past, they have been willing to pay guys like, 
uh, Wes Matthews. No, like the the centers that they had. Oh, Eric Erica Dampier. Da- Eric, Eric Erica Dampier. Dampier. <laughs> <laughs> um, all these other guys Sagana that they had Jop paid, yeah, got that paid. underperformed, but yet he wouldn't pay Tyson. And it's the same thing. You mm-hmm. were willing to pay Wes Matthews, Chandler Parsons, all this money, and yet you won't pay Danny Green when you actually have a good team yeah. now, and he fits in perfectly. If I'm going to overpay anyone, it would be him it, right it now. It should have been, and I, like I said on, the, on our last podcast, it should have started at four years, sixty million. Yeah, because of his age, a four-year deal would have been so He's much 32. more enticing, and the fifteen million would have been so much better. And it's, it's not a lot. No, it's it's that's not and, a max. And three for thirty-six you is still not have going seven million left over, and it's not going to convince him to choose you over the Lakers. And and if if you Think about this. You're going against the Lakers, the Lakers in free agency. Who have, are not just the Lakers. They also have LeBron, LeBron and AD in. right now. So if you're going to win Danny Green, you have to throw a contract that nobody would ignore. And we're so willing to do it for some players, but then for others, we're like, no. The Wes Matthews, you actually should. after a torn Achilles, Wes Matthews, here you go, max, max contract. <laughs> Boom. Done. Yeah. Danny Green... Off a championship, best three and D guy in the league. I mean, we'll mm. give you twelve a yeah, year, yeah. but I mean, I a four for sixty. I felt like would have made it too much. And to this pass is on. my thing with the Mavs. It's like some guys they are so loyal and emotional about, like the way that they've taken care of Dwight Powell and Dorian Finney-Smith and <sighs> and different guys in the past. You know, I can't think of names right now, but they're known to be very a loyal a loyal organization. They take care of their guys. But then some guys, they're so cold. Like Monte, Monte Ellis, you're 33 now. We don't want you. You're too old. You know, Danny Green. Well, he was 30 at yeah, the time. Yeah, 30. Yeah. It's like some guys, they're, you know, Tyson, Berea, they, they get so cold and calculated. Whereas, whereas with other guys, they take care of them so well. And it's just like, I don't understand. What, what's hilarious with them is they always say, the Mavericks say, and Cubans say, star, you got to have stars yeah. to win. And yet... They are one of two teams in NBA history to win a championship with only one star. So an all star. If anybody can prove that you don't need a team loaded with stars, it was Dallas. They did it with Dirk in 2011. I mean, the Raptors. The Raptors did it. Now, with, I mean, well, he had Kyle Lowry. But, but, okay, Lowry and Siakam, yes, they're big time. They came up but big they're time. Not but they're superstars. not superstars. Yeah, yeah. And, and Dirk had, yes. Jason Kidd was 55 years old. And Jason Terry was a sixth man. Tyson Let's Chandler be real. Average averaged nine and nine. Ten, yeah, 10 points, nine rebounds. So it's not, like, no, it was nine and nine. These guys are, yeah. are really good, but they weren't stars and you won. So why do you have this mindset? You can't sign Tyson because Dwight, the great Dwight <laughs> Howard is out there. Well, and it was Darren Williams. Oh, the great Darren for, yeah. Williams, which, which at you the know. Time, well, at the time, both of them were good. I'm not ta- like... I get the idea. But you had guys. Yeah, you had the guys that won a championship. And so it's like, I don't think the front office, I don't think they're complete morons. I'm not calling for Donnie's head. But this idea of like going after guys in free agency, they've made other great moves that I think are awesome. And I love that. But the free agent plan, whoever's idea that is, I don't know who, but whoever had that idea, we need to stop. Move on from free agency. Don't let that person come into the room anymore. You don't. Because this isn't working. You don't get the guys in free agency. The one guy you got was coming off a torn Achilles, <laughs> and you gave him a max deal. I mean, and he wasn't even worth a max if he was healthy. Yeah. Well, and and you know, people talk about they got Harrison Barnes, they got Chandler Parsons, which is true. Again, but they had to max these guys. And also, out. I don't really know if anybody else wanted them. No. You know, not. I don't mean that in like they sucked or whatever. I'm just saying there wasn't really a lot of competition. And they may have wanted them, but they weren't going to give them. Yeah. Max. Like <laughs> we're willing to give max money. To some of the worst players ever. No disrespect. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was really mean to Wait, Harrison Barnes. How many Barnes. times have we said no yes. disrespect? <laughs> I love Harrison Barnes, actually. Okay. I don't really like Chandler but Parsons that much. nobody would have thought that he was a Max guy. And, and, I, and I yeah. think probably Parsons people would say the same thing. Now, okay, my point is not that these guys suck. My point is the Mavericks decision making sometimes is so inconsistent. It's like... Yes, you signed Barnes and Parsons to a max, and they turned out to be good. That's my point. Why don't you do that with 
other guys, like a guy like Danny Green or Bogdanovich. Tobias Harris. Yeah, same principle. Those kind of mid-tier guys, Malcolm you can Brogdon. go after them, sign them. Like people bring that up as like their point. I'm like, no, that's my point is that mm-hmm. they did get those kind of guys. Go after those kind of guys now, not yes. Kimba or guys that aren't going to sign here. Look, if if you're going against Boston, New York, or Los Angeles, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. So just stop. Stop going after these guys unless they tell you if, if it's a guy that was from Dallas, like Julius Randle, he would have <laughs> signed here before. I mean, but and I don't like Marcus Julius Randle. was from Dallas. Yeah, area. and he picked San Antonio. But That's who, true. Again, who, why wouldn't you pick the Spurs over Dallas? No disrespect to no dis- Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's it's just like it three year thirty six million, and if that's what our final offer was, then yeah, we deserve to lose him. Yeah. You're going against the Lakers with LeBron and Anthony Davis. You're going to lose unless I you would give him, sign with them, and, and we're willing to do that in the past. Give guys that don't really deserve that money more money like it's nothing but when it comes to some other players they're like no we're, we're gonna keep the powder dry yeah. and it's like you nobody know nobody wants our powder no okay yeah <laughs> it's our, bad it's, it's bad powder it's bad powder we Whatever got low powder quality we got, powder yes. okay we got the low quality stuff and it, you know and like i said i don't think danny green was ever gonna actually come to the mavericks and like you said in the last episode it's not fair because no matter what happens people are gonna paint it in a bad way and he's going to look like a bad guy but like i said i'm not an idiot but that's what he did i can read yeah. the situation i can see what the what the lakers offered i can see what the mavs offered and i can see what danny green said about the mavs to me it looks like the mavs were leverage how, how quickly did danny green make that decision so fast instantly instantly so he never really intended he knew to all come along to, what he was going to do as, as soon as he picked the clippers hey lakers, lakers. he didn't call dallas yeah you know, and maybe he did and said, Hey, do you guys have a counter offer? And they're like, We're sticking to our guns <laughs> or whatever. We need our cap space because yes. Giannis is going to be yes. a free agent. And that's the biggest thing. They fear better not go they after are Giannis. Just, I, I can't even talk about can that. Can we have right a moment now. of silence? <laughs> if the Mavericks' goal is Giannis Atenacumpo. <laughs> I just. Can we move on? You're not getting Giannis. You're not. You're not. You know what's funny, though, is and, that and you, you can had have, a chance to get Giannis. <laughs> you can sign his whole family to your team. Well, they didn't. The, his brother is okay. signing with the Bucks. We still have Costas. Yes. But they got the other brother. Yeah. So, Manassas. Look, and not only that, now Milwaukee is the Good. front runner in the East. Yeah. They're coming out of the East, barring some ridiculous well, you Jason know, Tatum may turn into that guy. The Celtics guy. are going to be better because oh they lost Kyrie and Al Horford who were their like two, their their two best, best players. players and they added Kimba who's never made the playoffs so they're going to be better oh, next yeah. year. They're, they're, the, they're the front runners. They're the front runners, yeah. You're not getting Kemba. Mark, I know you're never going to listen to this but please <laughs> don't hold out on getting quality players because you want to have cap space for Ken, uh, for uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's not coming to Dallas. Let it go. You have your Giannis. His name is Luca. That was so beautiful, Martin. Luca is going to be a better player than he's going to be top five in the league. You have him already. Yeah. You and Kristaps. D- so stop. Hope you had Tyson Chandler. You didn't need Dwight Howard. Yeah. Okay. You had quality. Play- you, you didn't. <laughs> you let Steve Nash go. For one year, but we're going to give Wes freaking Matthews a max contract. Where are... And I love Dallas. It's very hard for me to even say negative things about them. Yeah. You know how ult- defensive I get yeah. when you start saying negative things about well, Donnie and Mark. ultimately, I am still a Mavs fan, and I do still think Donnie and I, does a great job. And Mark, can I... Okay, yes, so okay. at this point, I feel like I should tell a story about Mark Cuban. Yes. Like a nice story. So this is our yes, anniversary. I remember, yeah. yeah. So it was our uh, wedding anniversary. And I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I could get something like Mavericks related for Marty. And so I emailed Mark Cuban and I was like, hey, my husband's a really big Mavs fan. Do you have like, you know, 
like a free t-shirt you give to people or whatever. I didn't want anything big. I just figured just coming from Mark Cuban would be cool enough. Even if it was like a bumper sticker or something, I was like, you know, do you have anything cool that I could give him for our wedding anniversary? And so he responded to my email, which in itself was cool. And he said, um, let me know which game you want to go to and I'll give you tickets. And I was like, what? And so we and they were good. Yeah, seats. we went to a Pelicans game and it was on the behind the hoop, which is where he sits. And it was like, I don't know, maybe three or four rows yeah. up. I mean, they were good seats and our tickets were at um, Will Call. We got them. We went and it was like. It was just really awesome. I wasn't expecting him to respond, much less something like that. I just mm -hmm. wanted like a shirt. So I have respect for Mark Cuban. I love And Mark he's a Cuban. nice guy. And what yes. he's done for the Mavericks is great. I mean, where they are right now, yeah, he's changed and, the culture. And I don't think he should sell the team. No, I, I would I rather have Mark Cuban as our <laughs> than owner Jim than, than any other Anybody owner. Else. I love yeah. Mark Cuban. I just get... As a fan, you get frustrated yeah, with when because, you don't get your player. And it's because we want them to be mm -hmm. good. So when things don't work out, of course we're going to be upset. Yeah. Like that's, I think that's yeah. fine. I think that's reasonable. But and hopefully we, we <laughs> learn just to give up on free Yeah, agency. now that's what upsets me. If they yes. keep doing this, it's just going to get in, worse in and worse. In two years... If we're chasing Giannis in two years, or Tatum, <laughs> Danny Green's contract expires, and I'm sure the Lakers are going to have a bunch of other people expire. They're going to have Max spot open. The Mavs, Giannis, no, the oh. Lakers, oh, and the Mavs at the same time. Giannis is going to be a free agent. Where's he going? Lakers. <laughs> okay, we don't even have to guess. Yeah. Like, it, if it's between Dallas and L.A. He's going to L.A. He's going to L.A. Dallas is such a random city. Why would he come to Dallas? That's now, like saying he's going to go to Charlotte. Like, what? Now, the, the organization's great. The city's great. And when you get the guys, they tend to want to yeah, stay. Yeah, when players come here, they realize like, oh, wow, I want to stay here. Again, it's just do just what stop. you've done when you had Dirk. And every year and a half or two years, you would make a big blockbuster yeah. trade mid-season. Kind of change out players until something sticks. And you always had an interchange of assets. You to would, tr yeah, to and they slowly built that. You know, they yes. got Terry. They got Kid. They made so, the trade for um, Haywood or Hayward. Karam Butler and, yeah. and uh, Brandon, Brandon Haywood. Haywood? Yeah, Haywood. not Hayward. Haywood. Butler, Deshaun. And then like, you got Sean Marion. So They slowly built it through trades. Do that. But in order to do that, you have to sign people. You have to have Even assets. if they're not the best fit, you got to have players that can play. Because other teams don't want Dorian Finney-Smith. Yeah. Other teams don't want Kapowell. <laughs> it's just the way it is. They don't want them. They want Bogdanovich. They want Malcolm Brogdon. They want Danny Green. Russell. D'Angelo Russell. They want guys that are proven that they can play yeah. on a high level. And not that these guys are like superstars, but they're assets. Yeah. And and you continue to show little interest because, oh, they're not a good fit. Well, that might be true. But in order to build your team, sometimes you have to sign just like the Warriors did. you got to get D'Angelo Russell, who does not fit. But I bet you uh, gonna flip trade it, deadline yeah. this year at the trade deadline, D'Angelo Russell's going somewhere Jason for, Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> for the great Jason Tatum. Yeah. So Tatum for MVP. Well, you hashtag. know what? It might be to Minnesota for Robert Covington yeah. and somebody else. So they Andrew they kinda, Wiggins. Well, nobody wants Andrew Wiggins. Okay, so at this point, um, like I said, the Mavs are gonna be good next year. I think there's some things they could do to make themselves even better. We talked about Andre Guadala, Steven Adams if he's and available. What would it hurt at this point to get Goran Dragic? Just well, do it. What is it going to hurt? I mean, like that, I feel like they would be doing it just for the sake of doing it. Well, okay. He would instantly be your third best player. <laughs> okay. Just, I mean, do something. You're so desperate. See, I don't want to make a desperate desperation. It's one move. year deal. Yeah, like true. his con it's, it doesn't That's true. it's just like Iguodala. It doesn't hurt you. At yeah. least the guy can play basketball. And, well, and you're not going to have freaking Dorian Finney-Smith or Justin Jackson. Well, see, and that's that's what I'm talking about is that I don't want to make a move just to make a move. I want to make a move for to fill the holes that they have. And I but, think like Iguodala fits that. The thing is, they lost out on all those guys. Well, so at this point, you might as well just bring in some people that can play. But Iguodala might be available. If they get Iguodala, that would be great. Yeah, I would feel good about that. Yes, but... 
I mean, is there any indication based Not on yet. how this free agency has gone <laughs> that the Mavericks are going to end up yeah. with Iguodala? Let me check. He's going to end up going to the Lakers, the Clippers, the Rockets, or the Celtics. Yeah, you know, or like Steven Adams. I don't know if he's available, but say he is. I know he, he's got a big deal. I think he's making $25 million a year, and I get that. But, but the dude can play. Yeah, that's the thing is like, okay, why is he making that much money? Because he's, he's really good. good. Yes. And I would like to have a really good player. And, you know, again, I know they're going to be good with Porzingis and Luca, but you want to get better, mm-hmm. right? Like, why not try well, to get l- better? Let's say this. Let's say you get Steven Adams. And it's it's a good fit. You know, you guys are winning a lot of games, but you don't really like the combination of Adams and Porzingis on the floor at the same time. So trade deadline comes around. Who could you really use a, a center like Steven Adams? Golden State. Yeah. So now you trade Steven Adams for D'Angelo Russell. I mean, I don't not that one. I'm not saying you're just saying hypothetically. Hypothetically, something this like is that the kind happen. of crap yeah. that happens when you get assets. <laughs> yeah. When you don't have assets, you're not in the conversation with any of these guys. They yeah. don't have a chance of getting Iguodala or Steven Adams because they have they, nothing they have no to give. Well, right now, the only reason they're in, a con- in the conversation is because they're a salary dump team. And like that's, you know, I was saying this earlier. It sounds so insulting. In the day when we were talking, it's it, it's like it's sad. It's like the person that thinks they're really attractive when they're not. And it's like, <laughs> like somebody should tell them, you know, and like not to make this about attractiveness like obviously inner beauty mat- matters but it's like it's kind of like that it's like man can somebody just tell Dallas that free agents don't really want to sign here like can we can yeah. someone tell them that when you get them they love you yeah and they want to stay but you got to get them and the only way we've been able to do that is through trades so yeah i think uh i think the mavs I think that they will reevaluate the Goran Dragic situation. At this point, it doesn't hurt them because they lost out on all their guys, so the cap space does nothing. And at least he can play. So that, and I know the Iguodala, I think they'll try to do that. Would you rather have Iguodala or Goran Dragic? Whichever one says yes first. (laughs) Seriously. If if you if you call my you need Dragic? You need a guy that can play basketball. And and if your starting lineup and here's the no disrespect again. <laughs> I love Jalen. He played well, but Goran Dragic is a better player. Dorian Finney-Smith. No disrespect. <laughs> is not a starting caliber player. <laughs> That's going to be our new hashtag. Justin Jackson. That's the new slogan for the potty. No disrespect. No disrespect. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you, you need guys that can play. So, if you if you are trying to get Iguodala. Okay. <laughs> Whichever one says yes. You take them, and and then whatever you you go from there. But now they still have twenty two million. They there's a scenario where they can yeah. end up with both. Well, but see that those things would be trades, and like you said, they don't have any assets. I don't know if there's a well, way to make that. Miami work. doesn't want an asset. No, nobody's going to give them a high quality asset for Goran Dragic because Maybe. the seventeen eighteen million a year that he's making, no one's going to. So I the, think it's nineteen. Yeah, so that would literally be. In my opinion, that would a be salary the asset. Dump. Yeah, taking in yes, a salary. Yes, yeah. you're you're helping the Heat out by taking Dragic. He doesn't fit there. They have Jimmy B, and Jimmy's going to be the man. Gorn doesn't belong now. If there's a real scenario that you can get Dragic and Iguodala, you have to do that. You have to because yeah. you you just can't go into the season with. Jalen and Dorian Finney-Smith and Kapow. I, I more want Iguodala could be, because, like I said earlier, the defense. I think you're going to need that now more than ever. Now that, I mean, just the way the West is shaping up, it's going to be every single night. You're going to be facing a, a wing yeah. guy, either a point guard, shooting guard, or small forward. That's going to be every night. And so I think Iguodala. But I think we forget Dragic can play. Yeah, Dragic but, was an all-star yeah, two Yeah, but years I think ago. right now defense is a bigger priority yeah but you got nobody on your team that can score outside well, of luca and porzingis so defense is a seth team Curry is a good seth is a shooter. great player i love seth glad we have him no disrespect, no disrespect. <laughs> but goran was an all-star two years ago yeah goran is well i've always wanted goran yes. i think i said this in the last episode or maybe on twitter um 
that I've wanted Dragic ever since he was in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And then he went to the Rockets. The Rock, yeah. And then he went to the, to the Heat. The Mavs didn't even go after him. I was upset about that that summer. Yeah. I've wanted him for a long time. So, yeah, I would like to have Dragic. I would and, also like to have Iguodala. And we can get both. Yeah, that's I mean, the we thing. have the, like, the cap space for it's both. It's not of them. over. I mean, yeah. you could still do those things. I mean, that Courtney Lee chip that powdered around Courtney Lee is still dry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess we're just going to hold on to him until his contract expires and never use that piece. Yeah, I um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't I think that's pretty much all I really wanted to say. Um, you know, I'm disappointed with free agency. I'm frustrated with the plan powder. And I, you know, I think that Danny Green might have used the Mavs for leverage. All that being said, I'm disappointed that our our offer was only three for thirty six. Yeah. Because if that was all you were offering, then why were you even going after him? Yeah, because you really didn't have a chance of getting him. Yeah, you, you had to do something better than that if you're going to try to pry him away from the Lakers. Yeah. So, um, all that being said, no disrespect. Um, next year. I think the Mavs are going to be good. I'm looking forward to seeing Luca and Porzingis play together. We'll see what else they put together. Maybe nothing. But, um, you know, I'm still looking forward to the next year. Like you said, they might be a playoff team or, you know, really close to it. I think it'll be fun. But, um, but yeah, I'm disappointed. And that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, I'm still a diehard Mavs fan. Yeah. I know Skin will try to tell me I'm an eighth grade teenager going through puberty puberty or whatever girl going through puberty and you know but this is can i point out just in the hashtag me too movement um probably not a good idea to compare to say that about i'm gonna get this out probably not a good idea to compare them to a teenage girl going through Mm -hmm. puberty because why they gotta be why is it gotta be a girl i mean teenage boys can be just as whiny but you know he should have never said that tweet originally about how the Mavs are going to be really happy with Mavs fans are going to be really happy with free agency, and then to come back and say, "Well, you guys should be happy with what yeah, you have." Yeah, this is this is your fault we're that not you saying, feel this way. <laughs> we're not happy. We are happy that we got Porzingis and Luca, and they're both under twenty three years old or twenty three years old and under, whatever. Yeah. But we just felt like we could have did more in this free agency. We didn't. We're disappointed, and we're disappointed. Because of the um, the state or the expectations that were set by the team, you know, we just followed what the team did, and they had they clearly cleared up that cap space. That was obvious. Why else would you have cap space? Like these are the expectations that the team set, and so going by that, I'm disappointed and I'm frustrated with the plan. Go Mavs. And, and the one thing we can really look forward to next season is the really, really A-class, top-of-the-line interview with the Shedder <laughs> after halftime because the second question is very insightful every time. I'm going to edit that no. out. <laughs> no. We got Maz fans on our side. We're not loyal to Jeff Skin. I don't care if he likes our podcast or not. Yeah, I don't want him to blue ball us. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but... It's like black ball, except okay. since we're Mavs fans, it's blue ball. The thing is, there's a lot of things I love. Don't edit that out. Why? Because I think I'm not the only one that feels that way. I mute those interviews. I think you're just emotional right now. Martin, you're acting well, like an eighth grade girl. Well, what, bother- <laughs> <laughs> what bothers me is for him to... To judge Mavs fans that way. Yeah. Look, I know there's irrational people, but well, you want to talk about like keeping your your react being in control of your reaction. Look what you and said. trying to stay yeah. positive, and that's how you're going to spread positivity by saying stuff like that. Like you don't look like the bigger person right yeah, now. You <laughs> easily could have said, "Look, guys," or not say anything. Or yeah, I, I know you're upset. You know what? Free I shouldn't agency have didn't that. go the way we wanted it to go, but. We got Luca and KP. Let's try to remember that, and let's get ready for this. And then let it go. And then just stop tweeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN sauces. Russell Westbrook and his agent Tad or Thad Fauscher. Fauscher. 
I don't know, are engaged with OKC GM Sam Presti on next steps for the All-Star Guard, including the possibility of trade this summer. We're Okay, so we're 45 minutes into the pod. Real quick, do you trade for Westbrook? No. Yeah, me neither. Because I, I don't, don't think he's an asset. I don't like his attitude, and he would just take the ball away from Luca. No. I think that's like worst case scenario. Now, if you can get in a three team trade or something, yeah, and that that's fine. But uh, where, and I know where we're the dump team because no one actually likes. And us. I know that sounds contradictory to what I said the entire pod about getting assets, but that's just one you stay away from. Yeah, Westbrook yeah. is not an asset; he is a liability. Y- okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um. So anyway, that's that's the state of the Mavs. You know, we're gonna watch next year. It'll be fun. I'm disappointed, and I hope that I hope they, you know, kind of wisen up. Do follow what they did with getting Porzingis. You know, collecting assets and making moves that way, and not missing out on so many opportunities just to chase somebody in free agency. And um, I'm gonna go have a beer with Dirk. <laughs> they're not gonna get that reference. Then they will. Okay. If they watch the match games, they'll get it. Okay. Um, thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. It's fun to have people to talk to about this. Um, I'm going to try to get this up on YouTube. I usually, it's like usually so delayed. I'm going to try to get this up pretty soon on YouTube. So you can leave your comments over there. Just search Dallas Hoops Fancast to find the channel. Leave your comments. Uh, tweet us at Dallas Hoops Cast, or you can follow me at underscore Sydney Myers. Um, and we look forward to, to chatting with you. Go Mavs. I think that's it. We see you guys in the next episode. Adios. So this is a uh, wind projections now updated. Wind project. Oh, wind yeah. projections. Yeah. So in the West, number one team, Houston with 53 wins, Golden State at 50, Clippers 48, Denver 48, Utah 47, Pelicans <laughs> 46. They have the great Lonzo ball. I don't understand the Pelicans at 46. The Lakers at 46. OKC at 43. San Antonio 43. Denver 43. Dallas 40. Wait, I thought Denver was higher. Oh, I meant Portland. Oh, okay. And Dallas 42.7. I think our next episode we should do like the NPR people. And talk like this. Welcome to Dallas Hoops Fan. Okay, what were you saying about win projections? Well, Sydney, <laughs> we don't have to. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> the Clippers being that low surprises me. The well, Lakers, you know, even though they do have LeBron and AD, and Danny Green definitely helps, but they don't have anybody else. And this is one thing I forgot to mention in the episode, but I was saying this earlier how they were really stupid by trading all of their guys in order to clear the cap space before they knew they were getting Kawhi or not. Mm -hmm. They should have waited until after they heard, because now they traded all those guys. They have no players. It's Now they're in a really bad, well, not a really bad spot, but they're in a bad spot. Who? The Lakers. Oh, yeah, yeah. They should have waited to trade those guys. First of all, I don't think the Pel... I don't know why... People get well, so caught Lonzo up Ball and in Brandon names. Ingram, but on they also paper, got they have Drew Holiday and they got um, JJ Reddick, JJ Red- Jonathan Reddick. On paper, these guys they sound good, but in a reality, Lonzo Ball is not very good. Yeah. Um, Brandon Ingram is not very good. Brandon Ingram, Ingram was not what people thought he would no, be. He's he was n- projected he's, to be the next Kevin Durant. He's an okay player, but yeah. he's not. He's not on a level that's going to elevate your team to yeah. winning. J.J. Reddick's not going to do that. J.J. Reddick is good when he's on a good team. Yeah. Drew Holiday has never been able to lead a team to a winning record. I would on, like to have Drew Holiday. I'd take him a in a heartbeat. Defender. But, but he's not like a, you know, good, not, like he you said, going to elevate your yeah. team. Yeah. And Zion, you don't know what he, they're not going to be good next year. And you, you write it down, do whatever you need to do. No disrespect. No disrespect. <laughs> Uh, you never said bye. I never say bye. It's my thing. Wow.